Hey there, everybody. Uh, John here from Make Math Moments, and uh, I just wanted to uh, share with you a couple things. I ended, you know, it's Friday today. I ended the day uh, on, a, on a high note. We kind of ended our quad master, uh, but I do want to share with you three strategies that uh, I used this week to engage my students in discussion, get them, um, you know, talking to each other. Because I know if you're like me in high school math class or even just in high school class teaching remote. Uh, it's rare that our students are speaking with each other and it's like their cameras are off, their mics are off, and when you ask them to engage, uh, it's kind of like dead silence. All of a sudden, like that, that bystander effect has taken over and the kids are waiting for someone else to uh, take over and, and lead that discussion. So I want to show you uh, three strategies uh, that, uh, that I use this week, but there are actually three strategies that I use in the classroom regularly uh, for practice structure. So getting our students to kind of practice ideas and discuss ideas. Um, before I do, I just want to make sure that uh, if you have subscribed to this, either uh, if you're watching this over on YouTube, hit subscribe. But if you're also watching me live right now on Facebook, hit the little bell uh, so that you know that when we go live, uh, you're going to get notified that uh, uh, we're, we're uh, sharing some uh, tidbits. Um, and uh, earlier this week, I kind of shared that we're going to share more tidbits here in Facebook, but also uh, over on YouTube. So you're going to want to get over there. Uh, we're going to do that on a weekly basis here. But uh, let, me, uh, let me start off by showing you an activity that I use in my classroom, uh, which is called an appointment clock activity. Um, the idea here that I have was when my students need to practice, instead of like handing out a whole bunch of textbook questions for them to do and then just you know, regurgitating what we had done in class, um, I asked them to do an appointment clock. So I hand out this paper here. They would then go and write each other's names down in different slots, and then we'd call out, say, uh, 10 o'clock appointment. And then each of them has their own math problem, or it might be an equation to solve, but it might be a, a math problem to, to work on. And they've already solved that math problem. And then when they go to their meet, they meet uh, their appointment, they'll exchange math problems. And then now the student has uh, the solution. And then they're, they're like, when they meet with their partner, they can check the back. Of, they're like the back of the book. They're like, hey, I, I got this. Did you get that? And now they're they're uh, giving each other feedback and uh, checking with each other. So that's like, I use that in the classroom quite regularly and as, as a practice structure. And so the question is like, how can I do this when my students are not face to face? And so what I did this particular week is I gave them the same questions that uh, we would normally, sorry, that's the other one, we, we would normally work on. And, but uh, what I did was I made Google Meets for them to join. So what they did is they, I made some times for them to schedule into, and I, this was all blank when I handed them this document or sent a link to this document. They, uh, I had the Google Meets. All I did was kind of create those Google Meets in advance, and then I said, hey, go and uh, set yourself up. Put a time schedule, uh, put your name in that slot, and then you're gonna go and meet with that person. And so then they would take their math problem and then take uh, go to that Google Meet, and then they would share that with each other in the Meet, and then they would do the math problem, and then have this small little meeting there together. And then all of a sudden, when you you got your students in smaller groups, that's when they start to turn their cameras on, and that's when they start to use their voice more in in class remotely. It doesn't usually happen when you're in the large group setting, but it does happen when you are in a small group setting. So you're gonna want to, you might want to uh, try that one out. That's the appointment clock structure. I'm gonna put all the links in this post, uh, but also uh, there's a page there you can get to that has the other links that uh, that uh, that uh, we're gonna share here, which is the second activity. So this is uh, the second activity I did this week, which is called the game of war. Like you know. You know, like the game of war, um, like the card game of war, where you, you know, two players, you split a deck, and then uh, you would just put the top card down, and the, the highest card wins, and you would take that, uh, that uh, tech is like points. Well, we kind of did, we do that when we also practice. So um, the the activity I did with this week was now I teach uh, right now advanced functions math class. So I've got senior level students and they're working on logarithms and evaluating logarithms. And so what I had my students do uh, was 
was that they had these logarithms to evaluate. I had these preset cards that have logarithm statements all over them. And then what they would, what we normally would do in class, we would pull that deck, just like a, that piece of paper and the, uh, your partner would pull a piece of paper and then you would have to evaluate the logarithm to see which one is a larger value. And so our students are practicing evaluating logarithms. Um, so I wanted to do that uh, digitally, uh, but it's like, how do I do that digitally? Well, I created the set of cards and then I randomly numbered those card sets for them to uh, kind of pull from. And so when the, uh, let me just find it here for you. I, I'm showing you all the back end of things here. So I've got my log war uh, right here and I'm just going to scroll through to see there's my appointment clock structure. My log war must be back here. Here it is. There's my game cards. Uh, so notice I, I have these expressions already ready to go and then I labeled them by number. And so then I had my students go into a Google Meet again uh, by in groupings and then in those groups, in that small setting, that small group, again, that's the key idea here, is that they use the spinner. And so I have this spinner over on Desmos uh, where Desmos created this. I didn't create this, but you can modify this to show the number of cards you have. And then kids would just click spin. And all they're doing is basically picking a random number here. And they would say, get four. And then they would go look at their cards and say, okay, well, I pulled card four, which is log 10. I have to evaluate log 10. Their opponent has done the same thing. and picked a random number that would give them another random card and they'd have to evaluate that. And then whoever has the larger would then mark down points. And so in, again, in that small group, in that Google Meet, because we're using Google Meets uh, instead of Zoom or other, other uh, softwares that do that same thing, uh, that's one activity that uh, the second activity our students can do. Now, the third activity that I did this week is called Truths and Lies. Uh, in Truths and Lies, uh, normally I have my students say, here's an expression or here's a graph or here's a, some mathematical idea. And they have to create uh, three, tr uh, true sta uh, three statements. Some can be true and some could be lies. And therefore, they would make those statements up. So there's a lot of thinking that goes into that. And then if they're doing this in partners, they are sharing ideas. They're re reiterating the main ideas to do that. We do that in class. And then what we would do in class is that they would put those up on the board and we're basically creating a gallery walk in our classroom of expressions or graphs and then statements that are either true or false and everyone else has to go and verify everybody else's so you've really created this great worksheet that's visual around the room so how do i do that digitally is uh i i created uh again google meets so they can work in small groups partners i did this today or i did this yesterday and they would go there and they would work on their statements and then while they were working on their statements in that small group setting they would go to a, this Padlet I created. So they'd scan this and they upload a picture of their work. So they upload their expression and then they'd upload their statements. So you can see that they would write the statements and then they'd create a little Google doc to say the answers, like which ones are true and which ones are lie, lies. So the students then would come to the gallery here and then do any other student's problem. So you've got this nice gallery of work that they created uh, and you didn't have to actually create any of that. But the key idea here is that they had a lot of discussion. Uh, kids are turning on those mics, like I said. That, that doesn't happen when you're just you at the, at, at the front or you uh, turn your camera on and doing a, a lecture style lesson. Try to uh, use any of these three activities that will help change the discussion that's happening in your remote learning classrooms. Uh, I'm eager to uh, see what you're doing. What are activities that you have been using uh, that generate discussion with your students? I'd love to hear about them. Hit me in the comments uh, so that I can uh, review this after I'm done going live. Now, I am done going live, uh, and I just want to remind you here to uh, subscribe uh, wherever you are. So you hit the bell if you're over on Facebook right now or uh, if you're in YouTube, hit that subscribe button and the bell to get uh, to know when we go live next. But uh, I wanted to uh, say thanks and uh, we will be in touch and I'll see you in the comments. Take care.